Hey y'all, welcome to part three of my tissue culture series. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how I make my media. If you haven't watched part one or part two, you should go check those out right now. But for those of you who are interested, this is going to be a very thorough step-by-step -step process of how I make my media. I'm going to be showing you both initiation media and also my multiplication media. I typically skip initiation media because the plants that I typically tissue culture were already grown in tissue culture to begin with so I can just skip through that phase altogether but I will show you how to do both just in case. Um, typically I would be working right there on my little desk but for lighting reasons I'm over here in front of my big window. I don't have a ring light or any kind of studio lighting or anything like that so I'm just kind of improvising here and I'm not gonna lie I'm working on a beer pong table. I know that's a little um, not professional but I'm improvising here I'm doing the best I can so just um ignore that part and you know I told y'all I'm not a professional when you're working with kitchen culture you just you got to do what you got to do so we're working on a beer pong table today but typically I would be working right there on my little desk I'm not gonna ramble anymore I'm just gonna go ahead and get right on into the video okay y'all um I hope you can see um it looks like you can see fine but we'll see okay so I brought my magnetic stirrer over here as you can see, and that's what I'm going to be pouring everything on. Let me move all this over here so you guys can see better. Oh, I forgot my chemicals. One sec. Okay, so we're going to start off with 800 milliliters of distilled water. Um, I use just a plastic measuring cup. I do have everything that I'm using today is listed in my lab tour video description box. So if you guys want to, if you haven't seen my lab tour video yet and you want to know where I got everything, go check out that video. Um, because I have all the links there, but we're just starting off with 800 milliliters of distilled water. Make sure it's distilled. This is going to be hard for me to see. Uh, good enough. It doesn't have to be exact on this part because we're going to top it off later. And then I drop my magnet in. Woo. Turn the stir on, get it going. Oh, there we go. Then um, I'm gonna take my MS, and this one already has the vitamins, sugar, and um, a gelling agent in it. I like it better because I don't have to measure out the sugar and the or anything like that. This one in particular uses gel jam for the gelling agent. I don't mind it, I think it works just fine, but um, this requires 36.43 grams per liter, so I'm going to go ahead and measure that out right now on my scale. Okay, I've got 36.41, that's close enough. And I'm just going to carefully dump that in, let that mix up. If you were just going to be doing, this was really awkward angle. I know you guys can't see my face, but if you were just going to be doing initiation, then you wouldn't add in the plant growth regulators, which is what I'm about to do now. So if you're not making multiplication media, then skip this part right here. Um, but I'm going to be making multiplication media today, and this is going to be my generic formula. It's just what I use um, to start off anything that I'm not really sure about. I pretty much have my protocols set out for philodendrons, which is what I typically tissue culture. Um, but for anything else, I like to use this formula specifically, and it's just a good base formula for anything that you're starting out with. So we're going to be adding in the um, BA, and I'm adding in one milliliter per liter. Um, this is a pre-dissolved solution. You can buy it in a powder form and dissolve it yourself. I don't like to. Um, because I'm lazy. That's why. Okay, so we're just going to drop that in there. And again, that was one, one milliliter for the liter of media that we're making. And then I'm gonna take the NAA and we're gonna do 0 0.1. So a teeny tiny bit of this. Okay. 
right, and then I like to turn off, I'm gonna top off the water, I'm gonna finish it, um, fill it all the way up to a liter. Um, and I like to turn off the stir while I do that just to make sure that um, I'm measuring it accurately. This is gonna be hard to do. Okay, you wanna make sure that you do that before you adjust your pH. I'm really bad about forgetting when I start adjusting the pH before I add the water and it does make a little bit of a difference because it dilutes everything. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. I like to test my pH while it's mixing because if it's not mixing, then everything starts to settle and again, that's gonna affect the pH. So I like to get everything mixed up again. I do have pH up and down. However, I never have to use the pH down unless I accidentally add a little bit too much of this. But for the most part, I only use this one. I'm gonna go ahead and get out my pH meter. All right. So now we're gonna test it. Okay, so it needs to go up quite a bit. So I have these blunt tip syringes that I like to use for this because you only need a teeny tiny amount. A little goes a long way with this stuff. So make sure you're really careful when you're adding it in because it's easy to add too much. want the pH to be between 5.6 and 6.0. Um, I like to get mine about 5.8, somewhere in the middle. Right now we're at about 5.5. We're gonna add a couple drops. Oh, that was probably too much. Let's see. Okay, that's actually perfect. That's right at about 5.8, which is where I like to keep mine. Make sure you rinse off um, your probe, the meter when you're done because the probe will get gunky from the drilling agent. And then that is all you need as far as making your media. Whoops. Back in there. Now I'm going to start dispensing. To dispense, I like these giant syringes. These are 100 milliliter syringes, which is exactly how much media I put into each of my containers. Um, since I am doing a liter, I can get 10 containers with 100 milliliters per container. I do like to leave my magnetic stirrer running while I'm dispensing the media into the containers because it'll keep everything mixed up as you're dispensing. Um, the first time I did this, I didn't leave it running and all of the, all of, I was using agar and all the agar settled to the very last container and I had to dump it all back in and mix it all back up and it was a mess. So make sure you leave your magnetic stirrer running while you're dispensing your media into the containers. Just like that. And then I grab a lid. And that's good to go. And then I'm just gonna do that for all the containers. Oh, by the way, these are 12 ounce. Yes, these are the 12 ounce containers. I also use eight and 16, but I typically prefer the eight and 12. I don't really like the 16 ounces that much. For some reason, I have a hard time sterilizing those. Um, they either get contaminated or I over sterilize them and then I feel like they're not as effective. I'm not really sure, I'm still working with it, but not a huge fan of the 16 ounce containers. So typically just eight or 12 ounce containers are what I'm usually reaching for whenever I make my media. And they're plenty big enough, they're plenty tall enough most of the time to do what I need them to do. So that's just my preference. But these are 12 ounce containers. For the last container, I go ahead and pop out my magnet for my magnetic stir, make sure it's turned off, and I just dump it in like so. All right, so that is all 10 containers, a whole liter of media, and now we're going to move on to the sterilization process. As I've already told you guys before, I use my microwave to sterilize. You can use an autoclave, you can use a pressure cooker, it's totally up to you. The microwave for me is the fastest. I can typically get all 10 containers 
um, sterilized in about 30 minutes or so because I have to let them cool off and stuff before I move them. But I'm gonna move all of this into my kitchen and I will see you guys in just a second. All right, y'all, uh, <laughs> welcome to my kitchen. Uh, this is just a regular trash bag and I've sprayed 10% bleach all on the inside. So just open it up, fluff it up and spray the inside. You can see it's kind of wet on the inside. You just want to make sure that that sits and it is um, getting clean while you microwave your media. I can typically do five containers at a time in here. Uh, the time is going to vary on your microwave. You want to make sure it's boiling for at least three minutes. For my microwave, it usually takes about seven minutes total, but it's just going to be trial and error on your part while you figure out what works best in your microwave. So we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna take these. You wanna make sure these lids are not on. You don't want them snapped. You just want them resting on top, okay? Don't snap them down, that's very important. My microwave is a little bit dirty, so just excuse that. Okay, so I've got all five containers in here. Lids are just resting on top, like I said. We're gonna close it and start it up for seven minutes. And when this is done, I will let you guys know what I do. All right, y'all, so sorry for the bad lighting and the awkward angle. Um, my media is done cooking in the microwave. Um, I do let it sit for about five minutes or so to cool off because it's very, very hot whenever it comes out. Um, make sure when you do that, you don't open the microwave, leave the microwave lid closed. I don't know if there's any logic behind that. I just, for some reason, I feel like whenever I open up the door, it's gonna introduce bacteria. I don't, I don't know. That, that could be wrong. I, it could be fine. I don't know. Um, but I like to leave it closed. It just makes me feel better um, while it's cooling down. But um, it has been about five minutes or so since it's been done. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. I did put on some gloves because I spray my hands with 10% bleach and I don't want to be spraying that directly on my hands. If you want to spray it directly on your hands, it's your world. You do what you want. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just spray my hands. Um, I keep 10% bleach in a spray bottle like this. I spray everything with it. This is what I spray down my um, my transfer box with whenever I'm working. So 10% bleach. I've always got a spray bottle full of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and spray my hands. And then I'm going to start taking out the media and I'm going to show you that. Okay, so I got bleach on my hands. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. You want to make sure that you still leave the lids just lay like laying on the top of the containers. You don't want to snap them down yet. You want to let them cool off first, um, but you want to make sure that they're cooling off in this bag. If you let them cool out on like a normal surface, then you can get contamination. Um, when I first started doing this, I wasn't doing this correctly, and I would say probably 70 to 80 percent of my containers were getting contaminated because. I wasn't letting them cool off in here. So you just wanna make sure that you're doing it this way and don't let them cool off just out on a counter somewhere because they're gonna get contaminated. All right, so I'm gonna to try to do this quickly. I like to go ahead and get my bag open and ready. And then I just as quickly as I can start moving them in here. And then I slide them all the way to the back because you want to be able to seal the front of this when they're all in here. So you've got to fit all 10 of them in here. So get them back as far as they can. Oh, these are hot. Don't burn yourself, especially with gloves, guys. Anytime you're working with anything that's hot and you're wearing gloves, you have to be careful. So I definitely didn't let these cool off long enough in the microwave because they're still very hot. That's okay. I'm just burning my hands a little bit. I wanted to get them out as soon as possible. I don't want to let them sit in there too long just because, like I said, I want to make sure that they don't get contaminated. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and take my spray bottle and spray it again. Just spray over the top of it. And I'm gonna seal it. Whenever I say seal the bag, I just, I'm just pressing this closed up here um, where the opening is, just like that. Um, and that's how I seal it off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the second batch, the other five containers that I have left. I'm gonna go ahead and microwave those and do the exact same thing. Also, I have to credit uh, this method to Frank Trumbull. Trumbull? 
I don't know, I, I might be butchering that. I'm sorry, I'm from Missouri and we mispronounce everything. Um, but from the Tissue Culture group on Facebook that I love so much, Frank, if you're watching this, I appreciate you and I'm grateful for your knowledge. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these other containers in the microwave. All right, y'all, we're back to get the second batch out. Um, it's the same thing. I'm gonna spray my hands with my bleach. So I have all 10 containers. Okay, so I have all 10 containers in the bag right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and spray one more time because you can never be too sure. And then I'm gonna seal the bag. Like I said, I just flatten it and press it down. All right, and then I just let those cool for um, probably 45 minutes or so and then whenever they are cool I just go around and through the bag Ooh. make sure that your lids are all sitting on top of the containers correctly sometimes they move they shift and then they're not even sitting on the containers so make sure they're all on the containers but again not pressed all the way but um, when they're all done when they're all cooled off I will go around and I will, over the outside of the bag, I'll just press down, I'll snap on all the lids before I open up the bag and take them all out. And then once I take them all out, I print these little address labels. They're just like the Avery address labels that you put on like envelopes. And I just have the whatever it is that I made and then the date, this is an old container obviously. And then um, the formula, which you can see right here is what we did today, which is one milliliter of BA and 0 0.1 milliliters of NAA. So that is my process. All right, y'all, so that's it for this video. I hope it was really helpful. I am gonna be doing a whole separate series on all the different formulas that I use for all of the different plants that I have. Um, right now, I'm only working with about three or four different formulas, but I will probably expand that as I go. That's just really all I need for what um, the plants that I'm working with at the moment. But yeah, if you guys are interested in that, I will definitely do a whole separate series on all the different protocols that I use for the different plants. I believe the next video that I'm gonna make is an acclimation video, and I'm gonna be showing you how I take the little plantlets in the baggies, like the imported tissue culture plantlets that we're all buying right now, um, I'm going to show you how to correctly acclimate those so you guys can stop killing them because I've seen so many people be devastated because they um, lose their tissue culture plantlets because they're not acclimating correctly. So I think that is going to be the next video. Um, I have a bag of white nights. I went ahead and just bought another bag. I have white nights already, but it's going to be a while before I'm ready to acclimate any of those. So I went ahead and just ordered another bag from my supplier. And I'm going to show you guys that in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And I really hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. I've been putting a lot of work into it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos for you guys. If there's anything that you guys can think of that you would like for me to add to this series, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can leave a comment or you can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm most active on Facebook, I would say. I'm a millennial. I just... It is what it is. You can reach me on Instagram or Facebook and all of my socials will be in the description box below. So be sure to check that out. And again, if you haven't um, seen part one or part two, you should go check those out as well because they are very informative. I think that pretty much covers everything for today. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.